right no, here. No, you don't need, you don't need a, the... I'm doing legend. He is legend, he is legend, he is legend. What's up, everybody? It's Pykel with League of Items. And in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the surprises from the beginning of the season. We'll talk about the standings, we'll talk about some upsets, and then we'll talk about the LPL specifically. Um, like I said, it's very early in the season. We've only had a couple weeks of a couple regions under our belt. Um, but they are... Uh, the games include some surprises. And they're surprises because they're upsets. But before we start talking about all of the upsets, I guess we should talk about the current standings. Um, so first of all, we can talk about the LCS. So we have Cloud9, Counter Logic Gaming, FlyQuest, and TSM all at 2-0. 100 Thieves, Evil Guardian, or Evil Guardians, Evil Geniuses, Dignitas. TS, no, 100 Thieves and Evil Geniuses at 1-1. One and, one, and then Dig, Golden Guardians, Immortals, and Team Liquid all at 0 and 2. Obviously, the records don't really tell you much about the games and how they went. A team like Team Liquid going 0 and 2 is surprising, but they did play against FlyQuest, which is an understanding loss. Um, but they also lost to TSM, which is a surprise. And, you know, we'll talk more about specific matchups and specific upsets in the future, but I wanted to, to get this out in the beginning because. You know, it's, it's way too early to overreact to a lot of this stuff. So you'll remember when I put out my other video, I think that TSM is one of the worst teams in the region because in my ranking system, I'm talking about teams on a global scale and what they're trying to accomplish on a global level. A team like TSM, even if they're competitive in the LCS, like I don't think they have a, a chance of winning the championship because they're not building to win championships and they're not building to compete internationally. Their players are too old in general. So it's not going to be viable long term. Um, but I have FlyQuest, EG, C9, and Team Liquid as my A teams. 100 Thieves as my B teams, or only the B team. And then Golden Guardians, Dig, CLG, and Immortals, and TSM, all league average or worse. And I'm not going to change that yet. I will be making an update video probably this week um, or after this. Maybe I should do it after next week because next week the LEC will get all figured out. Um, but, you know... That's, that's just the way that the LCS has shook out, shook out so far. And that's one of the interesting things about the format of the LEC and the LCS is that the best of ones make some people have crazy, like crazy different opinions. If you had these teams playing best of threes, even if TSM won the first game in a best of three, you would still assume that Team Liquid wins the best of three. Uh, but let's move on. Um, so that was first. We had the LCS. Now let's talk about the LEC. And again... It's a little surprising, not not crazy surprising overall because I was kind of um, expecting some of this to happen, but not all of it. So we have Vitality in first. They were my number one team overall. We have Gold, uh, G2 in second. They were my second team overall. We have uh, Mad Lions, who I had ranked as the fifth best team. Right now they're sitting at four and two. SK Gaming is pro maybe the biggest surprise in the LEC, uh, they've looked pretty good so far. A lot of people were higher on them than I was, um, like specifically because of a player like Marcoon. Sirtis has played a little bit better. Exakick Exa and Doss have had a pretty good early season. I don't think that they will be good long-term. I don't think that they're going to be competitive in the playoffs or the group stage or whatever is next. I don't expect them to go far, but... If they do start to move in that direction, that's when I'm going to start trying to reevaluate. So after next week, we'll see how the standings break out and to see if they qualify for the next set of games, which I, I'm pretty sure they will at this point. It's most likely that they will at this point. Uh, team BDS, also 4-2. and two. I have them as one of my worst teams. So SK Gaming and BDS, I had them as the two worst teams coming into the league from a talent perspective. I'm not necessarily going to change that opinion. Um, but the fact that they advance is a good sign for them. Team Heretics, another team that I was low on. Um, I had them as my third worst team, um, and they've played better. The one thing I'll say about Team Heretics is it'll be interesting to see what happens in the group stage because I don't expect teams to give away uh, a champion like Cassante 
to every team. I think that part of the reason why Heretics continuously gets it is because teams don't respect Ebby as a carry top laner. So when we get into the group stage, I wouldn't be surprised if they started targeting him specifically and forcing him to play a different style and then trying to exploit that. Next up, we have Fnatic. And I had Fnatic in sixth in my rankings. Right now, they're in seventh. I, it's not that I think that Fnatic is a horrible team. I think they're an average team. Everybody was telling me they were a very good team. That's where the big difference was. Koi, this is a surprise. Definitely a surprise. Um, they're just not playing that well in general. Um, I need to get a better look at... Like, I, I watch... Or at least I have the stream on a lot of the time, but it's at work, so... I don't necessarily watch every minute of every game. Um, so I need to look at them again specifically. Maybe it's time to regrade them. I doubt it because they're still a pretty strong team. Um, and they could always play much better in the group stage. Maybe the best of three format is going to be better because you don't want to overreact to best of ones just in general. Um, so, the, But then we have Koi. And then we have Astralis in ninth where I have them as a D team. I'm not shocked that they're that low. I'll definitely have to re-rank them. Uh, Dajor is bad. Jung Hoon had a better game today. Uh, he played Nami instead of Ash, which he's played almost like it seems like every game, um, and it went better for them. And then we have XL tied for last right now. XL is a team that I'm excited about in general, and I I think it'll be interesting to see how much they can progress going into next season. They'll have to have a big week next week in order to turn it around and qualify for the group stage. Uh, LEC is doing their new, has their new format. And this is a huge success for that format because there's so much drama. It's so early in the season, but you already have narratives about like, will this team make it? Will this team not qualify for the next stage? Just realized I had gum. Um, so I'll get rid of that. Um, but that's basically it for the LEC. And just to run run it back uh, in terms of what my tier list looked like going into the season, I had Vitality and G2 as A teams, Koi and Dexel as B teams. They're both playing quite poorly. Mad Lions and Fnatic as C teams, and then Astralis, Heretics, BDS, and SK as D tier teams. And, you know, for a team like BDS, Shio has played well. Um, for a team like G2, Yike has played well and is the carry player. Exactly what I said going into the season, and I was told that I was an idiot in the comments section. Haha, <laughs> I'm right. Like, G2, I feel somewhat... Um, correct about in general. Vitality, I feel somewhat correct about in general. Fnatic, I feel somewhat correct about in general. And then I feel like I'm wrong about Koi and XL right now, but I don't want to overreact because I still do believe in the talent of those players. Um, and then let's talk about the LCK. Uh, so in the LCK, we have T1 in first place, Damwon at 3-1. and one. They lost to T1. Gen.G is 3-1. and one. Sandbox is 3-1. and one. Uh, Sandbox is a team that I had a lot of faith in going in to this split. Um, I had them as my fifth ranked team with the upside of potentially A. Um, then we have KT Rolster, who I had as a B tier team. Maybe they're a little bit better than that, but probably not. Fred at Breon, I have them as the worst team in the in the region. Uh, they've had a pretty good um, early portion of the season going two and two, but I just don't think the talent is really there for them to have sustained success. Um, then we have Hanwha Life at a shocking one and three. You bring in King and Clid, Zika, Viper Life, and it just hasn't clicked so far. Part of the reason I think is Clid. I'm not blaming Clid entirely for what's going on. I think I think part of it's drafting and stuff like that, which we'll talk about in the next section. Um, DRX at one and three, not shocking. I had them as a B tier team, but in seventh place in the LCK, and then we have Nongshim and Kwangdong Freak, so I didn't expect much from. They were both at the bottom of my list as well, considered D-tier team, so like below average. Um, and they have some interesting players. Like, I love, like, I've, every time I have the opportunity to say Fiesta forever, I'm going to do it. Um, but that's it for the LCK. Not a ton of surprises. Um, it's kind of gone the way I expected, except for Hanwha Life. Hanwha Life has been underperforming. Fred Brion slightly overperforming, but I'm not going to change my opinions on Fred Brion yet. Um, so let's talk about the LPL. So on my screen, um, I have the LPL um, games for this upcoming week. And I just wanted to talk through some of the matchups to see where there are big differences based on my tier list. Uh, I'll show you the thing. Because in my, in my tier list, I have like... S, A, B, C, D, and 
depending on how many tiers away teams are from each other, that changes you know, how much the money line should move, in my opinion. Um, so let's just take a look at some of these. So first up, we have Thunder Talk Gaming against Team World Elite. Going into the season, I have Thunder Talk as a B-tier team and Team World Elite as a C-tier team. This means that the line at uh, minus 250 to plus 175, that's off in my mind because it should really be... It should really be minus 150 for Thunder Talk and plus 125 for Team World Elite. So if you wanted to bet on Thunder Talk, I would say that you're really not getting good odds because these teams aren't that far apart, which means the value is going to be on a team like World Elite. But do you want to bet on them? It's not an easy button to click. I think that, t I think that Thunder Talk will win because I like their roster. So it just comes down to, you know, if if you're like kind of attracted to that spot, just know that it's not really the best odds that you could get. Um or it's it's a little inflated. So if you if you already like Team World Elite, now you should like them even more, I guess is a better way of saying that. Let's go to the next matchup. We have so I would say there's value on that, potentially. Uh anyone's legend against Ultra Prime. So the sports book is listing it at minus 120 each way, which means that they think it's a dead even match. Uh, so the two teams are even in their mind. Personally, I don't think so. I think that anyone's legend is more talented overall than Ultra Prime. Part of the reason the line's listed like this is because anyone's legend has underperformed so far. I think that anyone's legend is uh, you know okay in this spot. Next up, we have Invictus Gaming against EDG. Invictus Gaming they have upside they they have played well so far in this season they beat rng and gideon has looked good dove has looked good um their top laner you should know my name has looked good so there's there's a an interesting opportunity for invictus gaming to outperform expectations quite significantly so i had edg going into the season as an a tier team and Invictus Gaming as a C tier team. Now that I kind of have seen the upside, now I'm a little bit more interested in playing a team like Invictus Gaming. So th there is a two tier differential, meaning that it should be about minus 230 to plus 200, right? EDG is minus 250, so I'm not getting value there. And Invictus Gaming is plus 175 when I think they should be plus 200. So I'm not getting value there. It's probably a game that you should stay away from or play it on something like DraftKings where you can put in a lineup with Invictus Gaming players. It's not it's not necessarily great odds, but like you're probably better off building a building a lineup like that and playing around the upside of that combination hitting cuz theoretically if you get the right Invictus Gaming combination uh, into a lineup, you can win like thousands of dollars as opposed to betting uh, 100 to win 175. So that's kind of how I would look at it personally. Um, next up, we have LNG against RNG. So we have LNG as a B tier team and RNG as an A tier team. At minus 150 and plus 110, it's just no value really. I think I think that LNG being plus LNG plus 110, they should be probably plus 125. So you're not you're not missing out on a ton, but you're missing out on a little bit. And then RNG is at cost. So I would say, if anything, you're going to want to be on the RNG side because at least you're not giving away um, like additional money to the VIG or something like that. Um, so I would say probably that, probably that. I think RNG also didn't look as good as they probably should have because they have that one loss. Um, so we'll keep going. Ninjas in Pajamas coming off of a loss today against JDG. I think JDG is the best team in the world. So we have JDG as an S plus team and Ninjas in Pajamas as a B tier team. Um, that's a two-tier differential. It should be plus 200 and minus 230. It's listed as plus 333 and minus 500. So this is the kind of spot where you would want to bet on ninjas in pajamas if you think they have the upside of winning that match. Um, so let's talk about that, I guess, in more detail. So first in the top lane, we have 369 against uh, Invincible or Rich. Today, Rich started the first game and then Invincible came in. They lost 2-0. That's not a good situation. Uh, Shaolong Bao and Kanavi. Obviously, I prefer Kanavi. Dream and Knight. I obviously prefer Knight. And then Ruler and Missing against Fotik and Zhuo. 
I prefer Ruler and Missing. Fotik looked very bad in the game today, specifically on Sivir. There were a lot of opportunities for him to get engaged on, which is a very bad sign. Um, for an AD carry, you are supposed to be more... You're, you're supposed to be playing safer, and he just wasn't playing safe enough, which is either a misunderstanding of his champion or the situation in the game. So that is a little bit concerning, but we have seen him play well in the past, so I'm not overly alarmed. Um, if I was going to play this game at all, it'd be Ninjas in Pajamas plus one and a half, because that's that's probably their best shot, is, um, is winning one out of the three games, which, you know, not the most difficult thing in the world. Uh, then we have Top Esports against Rare Adam. Uh, so Top Esports is an S minus team. I'm not. Sh I think that that'll probably stay the same, but maybe not. Maybe some other teams will over uh, will end up passing them. Rare Adam is a C tier team, so that's a three tier differential. Uh, that means it should be minus four hundred to plus three hundred or around that. Um, we have it at minus seven hundred and plus four hundred. So if you liked. Um, Rare Adam as an underdog, you're getting a pretty big incentive to play that side. They just won their match today. You know, I wouldn't play this personally, but like I said, if you're just looking for value spots, maybe that's a value spot for you. LGD against anyone's legend. Um, that is a one, two tier differential. It's listed at minus 175 plus 125. Um, so that's a slight value on anyone's legend, which I think is the right side. And again, they they didn't look good in their first matches that they played this year. So maybe that's getting baked in. Uh, maybe this is a good spot to play it early and hope it doesn't get bet down. It probably won't. Uh, any uh, Ultra Prime against Fun Plus Phoenix. Ultra Prime is C tier. FPX is C tier. FPX is a bigger name, so they're at minus 138. I think it should be minus 115 to plus 115 or like somewhere in that range. So it's pretty close, but I think you're getting a little value on Ultra Prime in this spot. I don't love their roster. I don't like Ning and um, Baolan. Like I wouldn't want them to be on my team. So that that is a negative in my mind, but they do have Doggo, which is nice, but you know, I'm not going to play that side of things. Uh, at the same time, FPX, you're paying a little bit of a, a tax because they're such a popular team. So it's probably a spot to stay away from. Team World Elite against OMG. Uh, I believe in OMG long term, but this line is pretty inflated. They're at minus 250, so it should be a two-tier differential. It's only a one-tier differential in my mind. I think that OMG has the upside of being an A-tier team, but they're not there yet in terms of stability in my mind, so it's probably a stay away. Invictus Gaming against Thunder Talk. That's at minus 120 both sides. I think that's a good spot to bet on Invictus Gaming right now before Thunder Talk. Thunder Talk be, the reason why is because if Thunder Talk loses their match go, and then going into the Invictus game, if Invictus has a strong showing against EDG, that line will get pushed even further. Uh, then we have BLG against Weibo. This one's a little surprising. So BLG at plus 162, Weibo Gaming at minus 225. That's wrong. So that's that's like a one and a half tier differential. I have it as like a one tier differential. BLG is definitely the right side in that. Um, I prefer Weibo Gaming. I would want Weibo Gaming to win because I like I support that team basically. Um, but BLG is also another team that I kind of support. This just seems too far apart. Um, going into the season, BLG is the team that I highlighted as like the most interesting team from the LPL from an upside perspective. Just because they're ex we're expecting them to have you know not a great season, but I think it is in their range of outcomes to be like a top three or four team in the league. So I think you kind of have to bet that one if you're so inclined. Then we have Top Esports against Ninjas in Pajamas. Uh, top Esports. So that's like a one two tier differential, and it's listed as like a three tier differential, uh, more like two and a half. So again, I'm not playing the ninjas in pajama side. And even if you like it, you're probably not getting enough value. One, two, one, two. Yeah. Actually, no, you are. 
So two tier. Yeah, you're getting you're getting you're incentivized to play ninjas in pajamas, but it's a pretty difficult thing to convince yourself of. So again, if you think it is a close matchup, then you should be betting plus one and a half maps. Probably it's less money, but you know it's a easier bet to win. Uh, Rare Adam against LNG. I think that it's a one tier differential. It's listed as much more than that. Um, so that's a good spot for Rare Adam in my mind. A great opportunity for them to disappoint me. And then EDG and RNG. It's listed as EDG as the favorite over RNG. I like RNG more. So I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I like those a decent amount. Those are the three that I like the most. If you wanted to play all three in a parlay, it'd be plus 1,400, meaning if you bet 100, you win 1,415. Um, I might do that with my... I get a free bet. Um, I think I'll get a free bet. So I'll probably use that on that type of thing. That type of parlay, that type of bet. So that's it for that portion of the video. Let's talk about upsets. Let's talk about upsets in a little more detail. So what I wanted to do was try to think to myself, like, why are these upsets happening and how are they happening? So I wanted to take a look at the scoreboards today from the LEC because two of those games really did surprise me. Um, I don't expect teams like Koi to be two and four. I don't expect... XL to lose to Astralis. I don't expect Fnatic to lose to Heretics, even though... I, yeah, so first game, upset. Astralis beat XL. Second game, upset. BDS beat Mad Lions. Third game, upset. SK Gaming beat Koi. Some people will say that shouldn't have been considered an upset because SK Gaming, SK Gaming is 3-2. and two, Koi was 2-3. and three. It was an upset. And then Vitality... Oh, Vitality beat G2. A lot of people probably think that was an upset. And then Heretics against Fnatic... Most people would agree that was an upset. So on this day of upsets, let's take a look at what the teams who were not expected to win. Let's look at how they drafted. So we had Cassante. In, the, in game two, we had Cassante. In game four, we had Cassante. And then in game five, we had Evie win on Cassante, which I guess, you know, that happens sometimes. Um... The, what I, I didn't really think that was going to be the case going into the season. I think that Cassante has good upside as a champion, but you can't just assume that he's going to fit the role within a team because he's a strong laner. And I think that's the biggest problem that teams have when they're trying to draft is they get too stuck up on you know what champions are strong and not what champions fit into my team composition. They'd rather get a powerful champion than have a champion that does a job that helps their team. This game, it looks like it just got out of control, but, you know, a lot of people are playing Narn to Cassante. You have the range match. You have the ra the ranged advantage in that lane. Um, you're not necessarily going to punish him, but worst case scenario is that Cassante, you know, just destroys Nar in lane, but Nar is still going to be somewhat useful in the late game. Although a losing Nar is not as helpful in late game team fights because he has a, condi a conditional engage. Then you have Trundle. Trundle's a champion we're not seeing very often, but against Cassante, Sejuani, and Nautilus, you're getting additional value for that champion with his ultimate. Um, so it's a lot easier to play front-to-back team fights when the first tank comes in, you use your ultimate, your team blows up that tank, and then you move on with a one-man advantage. Um, then we have Silas, a bunch of good ults to take in this game. And then we had Kabe and Jonghoon, the best game that they've played so far this split um, from a kill a kill death perspective, a kill score perspective. So Lucian Nami, Lucian Nami is a good combination, and theoretically they have the advantage in the laning phase, not of always being stronger than Nautilus Draven, but having the ranged advantage. There are different types of advantages in League of Legends, and you know if one side of the matchup is uh, advantageous, you're not going to win every time. You still have to execute the right way. So in this situation, um, without the context of what happened in the game, if Nautilus is able to engage onto Lucian or Nami, you're going to look like, oh, well, it was a good draft because we picked Nautilus and we engaged on their bot lane and we got Draven fed. And oh, it was so obvious to think that Draven would get fed against Lucian Nami. Uh, but that's 
you know, you have to execute. So I, I don't think this one's really a, a huge problem with the draft um, from XL. Uh, I've, I'm starting to have a pretty negative opinion of Sejuani in general. I think that if, like as time goes on, champions become so ubiquitous that players forget that they have a specialized skill set they should be using in a specific way. It's less like, oh, my champion does X, Y, and Z, and it's more like my team needs me to do A, B, and C. So if I'm playing Sejuani and my champion is good at, well, when played perfectly, you know, I'll have long, long um, range engage opportunities with my ultimate and I'll be able to engage um, with like, what's it called? Arctic Assault or something like that. And you have these ways to get into a team fight, but you're not always going to be able to use that. Um, especially if you're phase rush, you're going to be a little bit squishier than you would be otherwise. Um, and it just seems like a lot of the way that people are fishing for their ultimates with Sejuani, it just seems like they're kind of throwing it away when that's a sign that they're kind of pressing to make something happen when they don't really need to. You can kind of invite the enemy team um, you can invite the pressure. The team comes in. The enemy team comes into you. It's going to be easier to hit your ultimate, as opposed to just trying to throw it long range or something like that. Um, let's just move on. So Adam playing Darius, you know who to thunk it. Not super surprising. A team with Jin winning that is surprising. But it's an interesting team composition, and this is the kind of thing that, like, I would hope Team BDS does more often as time goes on. If you have Adam. And Adam's like, I can play Darius into Cassante. It's a pretty good matchup. And then you get Maokai. And then you get Azir. You don't need an AD carry that is going to pump out a ridiculous amount of damage. Like, could you use Sivir and, you know, just get another champion that's good in the late game and provide some speed up for Darius? Like, yeah, something like that could work. Or you can take Jin, who is relatively useless, except for when he's setting up his team. So if he's setting up his team in this situation, which he should be, as evidenced by his 1, 1, and 11 scoreline, you know, it's not about Crowny being a great player. It's about Adam going in, wreaking havoc, allowing the three uh, the three or four other champions to kind of dive into the enemy back line, and then Jin is supporting from long range. Like, you don't have to have every player be a carry in every game. Um, and that kind of worked out for them here. Uh, I don't like seeing El Yoya on Sejuani. That's just me. Uh, not the not the style that I would have my carry jungler uh, playing. Then we had SK Gaming against Koi, and we see another Tristana mid, and they lost. Uh, so not totally shocking. We see a Renekton lose. Not shocking. Lucian Yumi. So this doesn't seem like a completely ridiculous draft. Like, obviously, Tristana's lost twice, and everybody likes trolling about Renekton. Seems like a pretty straightforward game, 11 to 2. It just, me it just looks like SK Gaming got a slight advantage in the early game and kind of snowballed pretty hard. G2 against Vitality. Really interesting. I, I was very curious to see what Vitality was going to do in this matchup. I think that we will see Vitality and G2 play against each other in the future. And I want to see Bo on a true carry champion completely dominate Yike. That's what I want to see. Because Bo doesn't have to show that yet. Bo has that upside. And I think that we will see it at some point, just not yet. Um, I don't. I, I honestly don't love this team composition from Vitality. Because I don't love the double, range, the double ranged bot lane meta as much as other people do. I feel like it's very easy for your team to lack good enough engage opportunities. I understand that Cassiopeia has a pseudo engage because it's like a good stun that you can flash ultimate and it could work, but it's more of a tempo champion because you need to, you're better off when you're set up in a position and the enemy team has to walk into you. That's just a better position to play Cassiopeia from. And then you have Varus and Ash ultimates that are a little bit more long range. So again, they're good at picking the enemy team and the enemy team is more predictable when they're losing and walking into you. Um, so they were able to get it done. I'm not shocked. They're two very good teams. I'm not saying that G2 is bad. Uh, and then we had Fnatic against Heretics. We had Ebi get Cassante again, which, you know, I think that if you're afraid of Heretics in the next round where there's an, an actual elimination kind of portion to the competition, 
I don't think that they're just going to continuously give away Cassante. Um, this game was super messy too. Fnatic was winning. And again, and of course, when I put Fnatic onto a DraftKings lineup, they get a huge lead and then completely throw it away. Um, but, you know, am I totally shocked? Fnatic honestly should be 1-5. in five. They should. I don't think that they should have made that comeback the other day. And then they go and do something like this to break my heart. So I always get it wrong. Um, I think that's basically it. You know, I... I wish that we saw more upsets in the best of three regions. Like, obviously, Sandbox winning was a big upset. Um, not as big as a lot of other people probably thought, because I did have faith in their talent. But that's kind of just what happens in, in regions that have best of ones. This is a little extreme. I think that Team Liquid being 0-2 and two is very surprising. Koi being 2-4 and four is very surprising. Fnatic being 2-4 and four is pretty surprising. And XL being 1-5 and five is, in my mind, very surprising. Um, but them's the breaks. Uh, so that's all I have for you in this video. I will do an update to my tier list um, once the LEC is out of this round because um, that'll be a good way to kind of reorganize what I think about those teams. And it's not necessarily going to line up with standings because I'm not just looking at right now. I'm looking at what does their future look like as well for this season because ultimately the only thing that people should care about is the world championship in my opinion. Um, and that's kind of how I do things here. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later.